Welcome to another episode of Worship Tech Booth Makeover. In this episode, we are going to be talking about this wireless camera setup that we are using to capture, I guess you could call it a pre-service show for our live stream viewers. And here to unpack the why and the what of this setup is Aaron. How's it going? Good. Yeah, so uh, this is sort of a new thing that we've just recently started for our live broadcast. And it actually stemmed from our lead pastor was thinking, gosh, I feel like ever since we started meeting in person again in, the, in our facility, we still have a huge percentage sometimes you could argue even a larger percentage of our congregation is still online. How do we really make sure that we're shepherding them and prioritizing them and, and making sure that they're still f f truly a part of our community? And I'd seen some other churches do stuff that's similar to this. And so we decided we're, we're gonna actually do like, during our countdown, we're gonna actually have a sort of two hosts. They sit here at this table here and they, they um, sort of just chat and tell stories about things that are going on in the church. They basically do announcements. They, um, they just sort of yuck it up. And we have two personalities that just work well on camera like that. And they um, host the 15 minute countdown. It allows us to cover a lot of announcements. It allows us to uh, talk with the chat room folks, challenge them to engage a little bit more in our online community. And the word back that we've gotten from our online folks is that it really makes them feel more like they're a part of it. And actually during Easter, right at the end of that broadcast, we actually had this camera operated and stood up and walked our online campus into our sanctuary and made them feel like they were coming into worship. So that's the why behind the what. But uh, the way we're pulling it off is actually um, this really sort of simple setup. We already had a, a GH5 that we were using sporadically for other, other things. And then we didn't wanna try and run two more SDI cables. And so I just found this uh, wireless transmitter here and this thing's worked great. And it's basically this Holland, uh, Hollyland wireless transmitter is an SDI or, or HDMI uh, in and out. And it shoots the signal right into our sound booth. It's supposed to be more line of sight, beca but because our sound booth is pretty close, it works fine to shoot through one wall. And we're really thrilled. Then what I'm doing is I'm sending, we had an extra SDI feed, I'm sending an SDI cable across the root uh, of ceiling and it's dropping right into here. And it's converting into an HDMI cable, which then shows the broadcast on this little monitor here. We're gonna switch this out. For those of you who know what this is, this is a Atmos Ninja Inferno. This is a way too expensive monitor for this purpose, but that's okay. We're gonna be switching this out to a cheaper monitor and moving this back to one of our camera rigs pretty soon. This allows us to, to basically inform our hosts when, they're, when they go live. Right before they go live, we have scrolling announcements and they're just seeing the program feed on the screen. And as soon as it switches to them, they know that they're broadcasting live. Yeah, we um, don't have any fancy comm system set up right now for that, or not they don't currently. have earpieces or anything. We just usually tell them, we come out here and say, we're about to take you live, so that they sort of prepare themselves a little bit. The other thing that's kind of fun is we've got this, this angled, so it sees our vision wall back here. People are walking in, pri our primary door is right behind this frame, and there's just some energy and stuff behind, this, behind the monitor. And occasionally it's even fun. We have members come up and sort of jump into the feed and say hi to folks that are online. Um, the first week we did it, we actually had someone show up and just stand here and stare. Yeah, that was a little awkward. It was a little <laughs> weird, but our congregation is starting to learn that this is actually taking place. So, yep. and what we're hearing back is it's a huge win that they feel like a part of it. They're hearing stories about what's going on in between services. They're hearing stories about um, even folks who've passed away and memorial services more. It allows us to just shepherd them a lot better than we can when they're um, not here. Yeah, so that's the, the video setup, guys. It's, it's pretty simple because obviously you have to get the, the camera, a camera feed to our video switcher, the ATEM Production Studio 4K. We're using that Hollyland um, Hollyland, Hollyland? I think it's Hollyland. Mars, Holly, whatever it is, the wireless transmitter on top here. How much did that transmitter cost? I think it was about 550 when it was said and done. Yeah, so pretty reasonably priced, and we haven't had any signal dropout issues, even going through a wall. 
Um, we actually, um, it has both power supply and a battery, so you could be like a roaming wireless cam or like what we have is kind of both. It's like what we had to do this Easter was we kept the battery in there and I moved the power supply in the room because I use this as a wide shot of the room during the service. So that that was really great, and you have like a simple. Did that? Did it come with that mount on top of the camera, or no, did you have to buy I, that? I had this mount. Okay. This is how I mount a confidence monitor on here, or a, a viewing monitor normally. So yeah, I had to get this mount. But actually, I think they did come with a short one that's not movable like this. Oh, okay. I can't remember. And then we've got the GH5 has a dummy battery power supply too, so we don't have to run power off of that. Um, Manfrotto tripod, simple little LED light he's got there as well. Is that like a newer, yep. pretty affordable? Like we, newer. Most of the time, I feel like on Sunday mornings, it's not even super necessary because we have all this natural light anyway. Exactly. Normally, it's really there in case it's an overcast day. Oh, yeah. And sort of, it acts more like a fill right now because our key is essentially this window. Yep. Um, but that's the other thing that's kind of cool about this. You could take one of your normal in-service cameras and make it wireless so you can use it still in the service if you yep. have to. Yep. You could just pick this camera up after the pre-service, walk it in there and it becomes part of your broadcast just like we did on Easter. And battery life on that wireless transmitter is good too if you need it to be wireless for a while. Cause it was like, you said three hours or something? Three or four hours at least. I didn't even drain yep. it by then. And it's a Sony battery? Yeah, it's like, it's one of these uh, sort of universal, what is it? The F750. Yeah, we'll yeah, link it anyway. all somewhere for you guys down below. And it, so that's a, the key to the key thing we needed was a video um, run that was taking the camera feed into the switcher. And then, like Aaron said, we need another video feed that was then going to take our program output from the switcher to this little monitor. So two video uh, runs had to be made. And, but that's only one half of the equation. We then had to think about audio. And that's something that like I had to spend a bit more time thinking about. We actually had this more complicated too. We were going to, for one week, we tried, and it, and it worked. It like works. sending Great. the yeah. pre-service show into the main screens in the in the sanctuary. So we needed program, um, you know, the audio and the video to get to the right places. There, we're not really doing that because we kind of felt like it was a bit distracting um, for people just hanging out in the sanctuary. We might then. actually go back to that, yeah. um, but not for the whole pre-service show but like the very what we did the very first week we did this is they they broadcast for 15 minutes pre-service mm -hmm. and then they also broadcast both to the online campus and to our screens from the lobby for our announcement slot yeah they, so we might actually decide to do that eventually again because yeah. they usually the, the the team that's here it's our communications director they've already been doing announcement stuff they're really familiar with the content and so the first two minutes of our service, being able to broadcast them in there and not have to record announcements pre-service, it's the right people to do the announcements. We might decide to do that occasionally. Yeah. Um, and to do that, from an audio standpoint, we actually have two wireless microphones, handheld microphones that live just kind of back here on this table. So when um, they're talking, the hosts are talking out here, they're going into separate channels on our wing mixing console for front of house. And then also on our broadcast mix uh, in Ableton, we also have two separate channels there because if we're going to send program audio into the sanctuary, we actually want what they're hearing in the sanctuary to be the program audio mix in Ableton, not the actual mic inputs from these mics into the mixing console. So because of delay. Because of delay issues and sy yeah, syncing issues because the video is going to be behind the audio and so there's the, i actually felt like the more complicated side of the whole setup was some of the audio stuff more than the actual yep. video stuff and i just want you guys to be aware that when you're setting the system up just make sure i would i would recommend having two separate microphones that you can use just for this this purpose i think it makes it easier it's, it's not completely necessary but it makes it easier. So then when they're done here, if they want to go and do in-person announcements in there, they just leave the microphones here. They go in, they pull our other two handheld, handheld mic microphones um, inside the sanctuary, and then we're, we're good to go. So Yep. Yeah. yeah. Audio delay was the, the biggest challenge, honestly, with this whole thing. And then it was, it was great. It was up and running pretty quickly, quick, efficiently. So Yeah. So that is our wireless camera setup we're using for our lobby host time announcements. I've seen oh, a, 
Oh yeah. What's Should up? we talk about lower thirds? Oh yeah. That was well. That, you're right. That's a whole other thing you have to set up for this. So yeah. So if you see here, you're actually seeing something different. Like if you check out in the background, we've got one uh, on our normal themes. We have announcement slide scrolling. But then during our pre-service uh, hosting time, we have these lower th thirds that I built. And then in Pro Presenter, I just have a countdown here. It's not currently running because we're midweek, but normally there's a countdown here, which also helps our, our hosts know when they're going to be finishing up their, their time. And then this is a custom sized video that we create each week to modify it for the lower thirds that just scrolls our announcements below the, that hosting time. So it allows us to send one thing to the TVs, Sep uh, same thing to the uh, yeah, front of see, house. Pro Presenter is running all of this right now. So we got lower thirds screen from Pro Presenter running the lower thirds on the program for the stream. And then he's, when he says TVs, he means these TVs right here. And the front and projectors. So, and the front projectors in the, uh, in, the, in the worship space that just have full screen announcements and a countdown on the top left. And the way I'm doing that is we actually need to switch because we don't want this lower thirds when we switch to worship. And so I'm using a macro, you know, pro presenter will, will send something different, but then I'm using a macro to switch the kind of lower thirds, uh, the format of the lower thirds In inside the of the ATEM. Yeah. So that's another step in yeah, the process. Yeah, this is one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, let's put a camera out in the lobby and It'll it's so easy. simple. And then there's just all these little things that come up with audio, with the presentation needs, um, but it works well. And like Aaron said, people, pe there's been a really good response to it. People online feel like they're actually, you know, a part of it. They don't just have to sit there watching a countdown. Um, I think it's a really creative way to, to engage your viewers. Yeah, I mean, if you're thinking like early COVID, your community may be really engaged in chat rooms and all this stuff, and we've just seen it taper off. And my guess is a lot of you guys have too. This has actually increased it. There's a little bit more chatting going on. Mm -hmm. We've gotten emails midweek like, oh man, I didn't hear about this story or that thing. It made me really feel part of the church again. Yep. So awesome. I think that's it. I think that's truly it. So for this setup, we got more videos coming your way, guys, on the other aspect of our tech booth upgrades we've been making. But that is our setup where we're using the wireless transmitter with a GH5 and it is working fantastically. So check out all the resources down below. We'll link all of this gear as well as all the courses, our program, hop on a strategy session with one of our coaches soon. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Smash like, share with your friends. See you next time.